Hey there, it's John with Excel Campus, and in this video, I'm going to explain how to jump to the resulting cell of an XLOOKUP formula with a macro. So let's just dive into an example. Here's an example here where we have a list of names, and then email addresses in this column here are the result of an XLOOKUP formula. And let's say maybe we need to update one of these uh, email addresses. We can just simply select this cell right here. Then I'm going to click this button here that runs the macro. That will take me over to the sheet of the source data here and also take me right to the cell that's the result of that XLOOKUP formula. So now maybe I can make a change to this. Maybe this is supposed to be .com instead of .ca or something like that. Hit enter. Of course, we can go back to our prospect sheet and the XLOOKUP formula is now going to return that result that we made a change for. Have another example here on this form sheet where we have something similar. We can uh, select from a list of names here that'll populate all the information for that name. Again, there's an XLOOKUP formula here that's populating or returning those results. Again, maybe we need to make a change here. We just wanna jump over and see the source data. We can select this cell here for the phone number or whatever it is, hit go to source, and that will take us to that sheet and that specific cell that contains the data. And this solution was inspired by Lucy, a member of our Elevate Excel training program. She wanted to be able to edit this cell directly here, which is again, the result of an XLOOKUP formula. Now we can't do that in Excel. So this is kind of the next best thing, which allows us to very quickly jump over to the source data and then edit the source directly or the result of the XLOOKUP formula. So let's take a look at how this macro works. I'm going to jump into the VB editor here, developer tab, visual basic button, keyboard shortcut is Alt F11. And here we have the macro. And I'll provide this uh, for free download. I'll put a link to the uh, download file in the description below this video. And it's a relatively simple macro. And the reason it is, is because XLOOKUP actually returns a range. Uh, whereas other lookup formulas like VLOOKUP return a value, XLOOKUP in the background, it actually returns a range, which is really cool. It doesn't really matter to us on the front end. We don't really see that. We still just see the value in the cell. But on the back end and in VBA, we can get a range or the range, the resulting range from the XLOOKUP formula relatively easy. So in this macro here, it's really just a few lines of code. This first line of code is going to evaluate the formula in the active cell. So it evaluates that formula and it's going to set the result of that to this range object here, this variable that's storing a range. We can see that declared up here. Uh, we use the on air resume next statement in case the formula does not contain an X lookup and does not return a range, uh, then we'll just uh, bypass an error that would be raised. So that's the first step here is we set uh, that R result variable to the resulting range of the X lookup formula. The evaluate function evaluates the formula. Next, all we have to do is just select the sheet, uh, and that's what this uh, line of code does here. It takes the resulting range dot parent, so the parent of that would be the sheet, and selects the sheet, and then we select the cell, the resulting cell from that XLOOKUP formula. If there is an error, then a message box is displayed that just says, please select a cell that contains the XLOOKUP formula. So that's the basics of the macro. Of course, you can modify this to enhance it and add additional features. But when we run this macro, and I'll just jump back over to Excel here, I'll go back to this prospect sheet. All I've done here is inserted a shape from the insert tab, just insert a shape and insert any shape you'd like. And then of course, we'll right click that and then assign the macro. And I assigned this macro here, which is in this workbook, hit OK. And then when we select the cell that contains the X lookup, and click the button to run the macro, it runs the macro, finds that resulting cell by evaluating the XLOOKUP formula, selects the sheet, and then selects the cell. Now this macro will work in this workbook because the macro is in the workbook. So if you're sending this to other, sending this file to other users, they could just open it, enable macros, and then use this button. You can also add this to your personal macro workbook, the macro to your personal macro workbook and then on my macros, uh, custom macros tab up here, I've also added a button here that will run the macro. So now I can use this in any workbook I have open. I don't have to have the macro in this workbook. I can just go to any workbook I have open, select a cell that contains an XLOOKUP formula, click my button here to uh, go to the XLOOKUP results, and that will take me right here to the resulting cell. And I should mention that I do have training on how to add macros to your personal macro workbook. 
and also create this customized ribbon up here. I'll put links to those videos in the description below this video. There is one caveat here with the XLOOKUP, and that's if you're using a structured reference in the lookup value. So in this XLOOKUP here, I'll just jump into it. In this XLOOKUP, for the lookup value, I'm using a structured reference. You can see this at notation and the, the column name, which happens to be name. So this is referencing this uh, cell in the same row as the formula in the name column. When we have this type of notation here, the XLOOKUP form, the evaluate function within VBA does not evaluate uh, the XLOOKUP properly because it needs the table name here uh, for this specific cell or this specific reference. It needs a table name in front of it. Excel doesn't let you put the table name in front of it there, it'll, it'll remove it. So I have uh, written an additional macro, I'll jump back over to the VB editor here. I've written an additional macro here that kind of parses out and finds that at symbol there and then adds the table name back into the formula before it evaluates it. It's a little more advanced here. Uh, you can step through the code if you wanna take a look at it and kind of study this here, but that will help, again, if you are using those structured references here in your XLOOKUP, in the lookup value here within the XLOOKUP. In that first example there on the prospect sheet, instead of using the structured reference, I just use the cell reference here to A10, and this will work just fine with that more simplified macro. I should also mention that you do not need to be using Excel tables with your XLOOKUP formulas. You can be using regular ranges as references in the XLOOKUP formulas, and the macro will work just fine. Now, of course, this macro does not work with VLOOKUP or any other lookup formula yet. It would be a little bit more advanced macro. We need to parse the VLOOKUP there, probably use the range.find method to actually kind of redo what the VLOOKUP is doing in order to find all these components here and jump to the cell. But if you're interested in having this work for VLOOKUP, maybe you're on a version of Excel that doesn't have XLOOKUP yet and you wanna use this for VLOOKUP, leave a comment right below this video. Vote for that and then uh, we can go ahead and create a solution. Or if you'd like to take it on as a challenge to write the macro yourself, do that and post the code in the comments below as well. So I hope this helps you. Of course, if you have any additional questions or suggestions, please leave a comment right below this video. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.